Hi, my name is Tom Johnson. I'm a technical writer based in Seattle. You probably know me from I'd rather be writing.com. This is my blog. I've been writing about topics in technical communication for like 16 years or so. So if you've never discovered my site, check it out. I've got 16 years of blogging about the whole world of techcom. Anyway, lately I've been doing some posts about prompt engineering, specifically focused on tech writing scenarios where your goal is to produce documentation of some kind. You can find these posts and information at TW plus AI, AI here. Go into prompt engineering and you can see a lot of the topics that I've been building out here. A lot of this is experimental and some of these are um, <clears throat> more valuable than others. One of the very first topics that I covered was task decomposition and complex tree diagrams. Now, in this topic, I don't want you to pay too much attention to the tree diagram as the example. This is really just an example of something complex that I was able to decompose into smaller tasks in a really easy way. But pretty much anything of complexity can be decomposed into smaller little chunks. This is the principle I want to communicate, that basically um, <clears throat> this is how we operate too as human technical writers. We take and break down the writing process into smaller, smaller tasks. First you gather information, then you maybe make an outline, then you write the first section, then you check it against uh, reference material for errors, and then you review it with SMEs and so on. So uh, any kind of writing writing activity could be simplified or not simplified broken down into simpler sub steps and if you can do that then you can basically take and accomplish a much more complex task by just having a series of smaller simpler tasks um, <clears throat> and this also mirrors the strategy that tech writers use for simplifying complex information right you don't give a user 300 steps that are really long and complex you break it into many smaller subsections each subsection with its own list of five to seven steps or so okay so in this example what i was trying to do is uh i wanted to create like a quick reference guide for my api i had a lot of um, users who said you know, um, we really struggle to find what we're looking for in the Java doc output. This is a Java API. And we really want like, <clears throat> like a quick, quick reference tree diagram or something that would visually communicate it. And we want to have each link clickable in the diagram and so on. So what I did is I, I had, um, access to, well, I used the reference material to pass in into an AI tool and then create like a tree diagram. And let's see, the tree diagram, let's see at the bottom here, looks something like this um, in this case. Uh, th this made sense for my, my product. People could see it at a glance. They could see what methods were available and what attributes they could, they could pull from those methods and, and so on. And they could see the shape of it. <clears throat> they could easily find, find things. Um, it, you can see I've actually kind of messed this up. I don't know why there's not a line connecting these, but <laughs> anyway, um, basically think about any, any topic you have and brainstorm how you could simplify it. Because sometimes if you were to just pass in all your reference content at one go into an AI tool and say, Hey, can you uh, create a tree diagram of these hundreds of elements? you'll probably get a lot of errors or maybe it will time out. Maybe it won't even have the, the needed tokens to sort of finish the task and so on. It will just kind of quit halfway through. Um, you got to find ways to break it up, to decompose it. The long-term idea is that <clears throat> if you can decompose a complex task into smaller subtasks, then eventually with like, agents will be able to link those small tasks together in some kind of automatic workflow. That part I have yet to see uh, in action. So really this is all kind of a manual um, linking of the tasks. 
But anyway, okay, so in order to kind of go about creating this tree of this massive API, basically I, I would start with the first root. Well, start with a pattern. <clears throat> I mean, you first want to like instruct the AI. You're going to build a tree diagram in ASCII text that follows a style similar to this. Uh, here's some additional instruction. Objects should be represented with curly braces. Arrays should be represented with square brackets. Child items should have their data type in parentheses. You want to be really specific about how the tree should be, but also dem kind of uh, demonstrate uh, how it should be with some examples. Um, with the right examples, you might not even need additional instruction. But yeah, you kind of give an idea of, of this tree diagram. Now, the next prompt is create a tree diagram that shows the nodes at the root level only. So uh, in this example, this Jabberwocky example, you've got four nodes at the root level and now draw that part of the diagram. And then you continue on to the next one. Okay, we're going to focus on the Wonder Wizzle Snacker node, right? Now, here's the like JSON representing the model for the Wonder Wizzle Snacker. Now add this to the tree and it kind of draws out the Wonder Wizzle Snacker. By the way, if you ever need um, just like Greek filler text, you can ask AI to write something in Jabberwocky uh, after the Lewis and Carol, Lewis Carroll, uh, you know, famous poem. And it, and it does a pretty bang up job, I have to say. And it's a lot more fun than just um, dumb uh, filler uh, lorem ipsum. Okay, so now we move on to the root get node, right? So maybe you have a JSON object that demonstrates all the different components of the root get node. Pass that in, and now you've, you've expanded it. See how we, we're attacking the nodes piece by piece. I realize this is like, seems common sense. This is not rocket science, but I, I firmly believe that the ability to decompose some complex task into all these subtasks is really at the heart of um, how to use these tools effectively. Now, before we keep going, I want to pause here and just offer a brief message from one of my sponsors, Zoom In Software. This is an excerpt from a podcast I did with Karen Brown. So uh, it's a couple minutes long and then we'll return here. This leads us kind of to the biggest question of tech writers and tech com today. Uh, let's say that a company develops and rolls out an AI agent, uh, like their own chat, AI powered chat. How do tech writers establish the connection between the documentation they're writing and producing and the intelligence of that AI chatbot? It's very clear. Uh, that any AI application, uh, any model, any LLM model is only going to be as good as the content that it has. Um, and when we say, you know, the content that it has, we're talking about breadth and depth, right? So first of all, we need to make sure that there is enough content to, you know, to basically have AI uh, ground, be able to ground any kind of query into that. Uh, but the content needs to be quality content. And this is, I think, where exactly where technical writers come into place. Um, enterprise knowledge, product answers, um, API guides, whatever it is that you're you know, thinking about, content types, different authoring tools, whatever it is that you're working on, this is what, uh, at the end of the day, compile your enterprise knowledge, right? Um, and so AI models need that level of uh, quality, breadth, and depth in order to function, in order to basically retrieve an answer or summarize a topic or whatever it is that you're looking to do with, with AI uh, or correspond you know, in a chatbot. And so you'll be able to very easily see, and by the way, we had companies, for example, that uh, ran you know, hackathons where they tested chatbot um, with or without unifying knowledge uh, into a single place, right? You see it immediately. Either you're getting a, a fuzzy response uh, on the verge of hallucination, or the AI is telling you, you know, I'm sorry, but I could not find an answer. Um, or it's, you know, redirecting you somewhere else and you don't want to redirect customers. 
But when you have unified knowledge and technical writers are part of the, you know, part of the, the game, and you're actually connecting the models to your documentation portal, uh, the results are incredible. We're seeing over 80% uh, in accuracy and coverage uh, with that kind of a use case. All right, thanks for listening and thanks for staying here. Um, this prompt just kind of uh, continues on through the other nodes in a very similar fashion, but it demonstrates this technique that I've been mentioning about not only breaking up complex tasks into smaller tasks, but also going section by section. You don't want to just um, try to try to execute your prompt all at once. Even if you're, let's say you're writing a topic, a documentation topic that's maybe 2,000 words long. Well, first you'd want to figure out what the outline is for all the sections. And then once you've got that, you go to the first part of your outline and have it write that section. And then you go to the second section, have it write that section. And each step of the way you can course correct. For example, if, uh, if the output here, well, let's jump back to the very first node. <clears throat> In this very first node, uh, the wonder whistle snacker, let's say that it didn't identify objects correctly with curly braces or it like was putting I don't know, instead of number, it was putting like float or whatever. Um, <clears throat> you could go and make some corrections and then later, later iterations will have those corrections probably. Um, and you won't have to <clears throat> fix them all later. It doesn't always remember your instruction, the AI tools. You might have to t uh, constantly kind of correct it. The ability to follow rules is a, is a um, sign of a more mature AI model. Okay. So the larger point is, is uh, breaking things up. You know, there's one post that I, I really like. Um, it's from an older series that I did. Let's see, simplifying complexity. <clears throat> and this is um, let users switch between macro and micro. I once saw my daughter drawing dog man. Wow, my, my kid is so much older now. <laughs> but uh, She was drawing dog man and um, you know, most of these books that teach you how to draw break things up into little steps one by one. And when you get to the end, you've actually drawn Dogman, which is some kind of like known character. Uh, if you just try to draw Dogman from the start, it really might be too difficult. Um, you need all these little steps along the way. And AI models work in such a similar way or at least the prompt engineering techniques with AI models work in a, in a really nice way where you can just build on the levels of complexity. For example, let's say that you're writing a topic, right? And you proceeded with the method that I described where you start with the outline, you go section by section. Well, once you're done, maybe you now you want to um, add links to each of the sections to any code elements mentioned. So you could have like an, a pass where you add links. Now maybe you want to enforce a style. You have specific style guide um, principles like you want to reduce adjectives, you want to have shorty, shortish sen sentences, or maybe you want to have, um, maybe you want to even optimize for a keyword or something, I don't know. Uh, you, you could you could do a pass for each of those and then maybe you want to do a pass for accuracy you could check all the content against your reference material and maybe another pass for um, checking it against like other types of material or or incorporating SME edits um, the point is when you can break things down like this it actually works quite well for achieving the end goal Man, these were the days. Uh, all right, <clears throat> so let's jump back. I've got lots of techniques here. TW plus AI, prompt engineering for tech comm scenarios. I keep adding to them. I like experimenting. I love um, playing around. And, uh, you know, one time <clears throat> I was talking with some, some tech writers, and the tech writer said, I'm really curious to know what forms of documentation will be discovered or made available because of AI that weren't available previously. And 
I thought that was a cool thought. And I was like, wow, what will AI allow us to do? And in my experience, AI has certainly allowed me to suddenly deliver um, diagrams that look like this and that, that, they're, that are entirely linked. I haven't added this because I thought this would elongate the tutorial here, but each of these uh, words can be like a variable that that is defined in like a Jinja dictionary, depending upon what scripting syntax you have available to you. And then, you know, the source might appear in double curly braces. And in that dictionary, you can in the dictionary, you can define the links for each and then they become clickable. Right. And, and so <clears throat> this has been tremendously well received. I've had engineers tell me they use it to understand the API that they're working on. I'm like, really? Um, and I use it all the time when I want to quickly find the link to something uh, or just better understand the shape of an API. How is it? How is it um, like wh how is it organized? How are these data models kind of organized in it? So I'm going to start doing this for like all of my APIs. I only do it for a few because it's tedious when you have an API that's constantly changing. People are adding and removing things to it. Uh, it's a lot of work to, to constantly update it. But um, <clears throat> program managers, product managers absolutely love it. Provides a great talking point when people are um, talk, uh, when they're, they're giving an overview about an API, explaining what's available in the API and so on. You've got a at a glance view, whereas reference documentation, <clears throat> it's really not built for, for glancing and consuming it visually. It's basically like table after table with one one ver one uh, element defined in the table next table down that table containing elements that are defined in the next tables down and so on it's like such a hierarchical list of tables it's it's kind of unreadable so to provide a, a quick at a glance reference of all the elements in an API like this i think it's a game changer and i think it's definitely one of the new documentation deliverables that is something you can, I was going to say easily, something that you can produce using AI, which with much less effort than if you were to do manually. Every time there's a new element that gets added, I will pass in my existing table and I will maybe share some of the, the, the reference documentation pages for the new elements and say, hey, expand this existing table, which already demonstrates the pattern for how to kind of like annotate or, or, or show everything, show all the different elements, add these new elements into the table and it will draw the little sections that need to be added and I add them. Um, so once you've got a table like this, it can be a lot easier to sort of maintain than drawing it for the first time from scratch. All right, that's about all I have. Um, I'll keep adding here. I'd love to hear feedback if you have it. Check out my blog, I'd rather be writing.com and uh, um, subscribe to the newsletter. I've also got the YouTube channel where I post a lot of this content. Thanks again for listening.